Hello, uh, I'm Caroline Freeman, Head of Learning Design at Brightwave, and I'm speaking to Miles Run Runham, from, um, who's Head of Digital at the BBC Academy. We've just come up from the floor, the exhibition floor, where we've been uh, talking about personalisation in learning. Um, and Miles, your role is uh, Head of Digital in BBC Academy, mm -hmm. so you're doing other things within the Academy apart from digital that's right yeah so so i'm part of the management team of the academy the management team has core training operations new talent which is focused mainly at apprenticeships and, and trainee schemes and we have some development teams and teams responsible for partnerships as well so digital is one of the kind of the functions of the academy structurally but i guess more probably more fully the the academy i think the way i think about it in is we're striving to become a digital service Right. So the academy, previously called Learning and Development, has a long history as a training function, a learning and development function, very much focused on classroom learning, on events, seminars, masterclasses, etc. That still remains, and we're transitioning, I guess, building on that and developing that to become a more digital service. And more of the touch points, more of the ways you find what the academy is and how you can learn become digital. I think that's the kind of transition that we're managing at the moment. And how has how that change sort of manifesting itself? I guess a part of it's sort of some obvious things, or not obvious, but some more straightforward things that we're doing. So a lot of product development. So we've, we've got a massive uh, program of change technologically in terms of creating a new product set for the academy so that people can find what we do more readily. They can find it in one place at one time. And then from that, we'll develop different ways of packaging the learning, social tools and personal tools. So there's a whole stream of kind of products management that, that we're, we're running at the moment but as well that the academy is changing the way it works so people who are perhaps more familiar with face-to-face -face classroom facilitation are starting to come to terms with what does it mean to be a facilitator in an online community for example so there's some quite interesting uh, cultural changes and changes of skills and capability in the department and across the organization as well do you think that that sort of change is that specific to the bbc or do you think that the those kinds of changes are replicated in other organisations. No, I think I, I suppose I think some of the manifestations are specific to the BBC because they would be. You know, it's mm. the, every organisation has its kind of unique uh, um, imprints, I guess. But no, I think these are this is a factor of a reflection of the way people work, the way people live now. That these these are tools and modes of behaviour and means of communication that everybody is familiar with. The expectation is that when you go to work, you can and should be able to work and behave in the workplace and around the workplace in the same way. So I think we're having to make sure that we're kind of meeting and ahead of those expectations as well. So I think it's partly a BBC activity, but more than that, I think it's a kind of the way people are. It's a consumer pattern, I think, that we're trying to manage, really. And so you've got this um, uh, the learning, what was a learning and development team, and what kind of new skills are they having to learn? Are you? Uh, at what point are you bringing sort of new people in to, to, to support that? So I suppose probably in the digital area, we've done, they're doing a couple of things with, with new skills. There's a digital content team or an editorial team, as we would call it, BBC tends to call content activity editorial. So we're bringing in a lot of people, and this is one of the things that BBC has an advantage for, but I think it's an important advantage that's, that's relevant, is a lot of our kind of content creation has a very editorial approach. So it's people who've worked in BBC radio, television, journalists, who are part of the, the BBC's digital and online output that you would see as a, as a license fee holder, as a member of the BBC audience. A lot of the people who are responsible for those stories we bring into the academy to help tell the learning stories that we need to tell, right. which I think is quite, it seems like an obvious point perhaps, but it's quite a different sensibility that we're not necessarily in those ways of constructing learning so much as we are trying to find interesting stories to tell and interesting stories that people can tell each other as well. So it's partly an editorial approach to the stories and how we construct them and distribute them. But it's also, I think, trying to facilitate connections between people who want to know and the experts in the organization who can help them. So I think that's a kind of community facilitation skill that we're, along with everybody else, figuring out and evolving at the moment. I mean, the, 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 the fact that you're using that sort of story, finding those stories, the learning stories, to, to be able to share things, I guess you're at an advantage because those part of those people's everyday jobs might be creating that kind of content anyway. But that that sort of model is also important in terms of any organisation, really. Yeah, I, I think I think it's a crucial 
part of, I think there's a point of making the stories relevant. And if you have that kind of editorial sensibility, that's something that you're probably having, you know, schooled to do, but also more minded to do. Uh, and I think there's a way of then keeping attention and packaging and managing that story. It's a long story or short story, but there's a way of managing and holding people's attention because you've captured the relevance, you know how to construct it. So I think those are, they're really useful skills. And I don't think, I don't think they're unique to the BBC. I think we have a particular capability there. But I think something that's interesting that's different now is that a lot of us are starting to tell our own stories anyway, just with our mm -hmm. use of our, you know, mainly the use of our phone, sharing photos, images, use of emojis and text. We're becoming more, I think, adept of managing our communications in the kind of the stories in those ways as well. And some of us are making video or whatever, but I think I think it's becoming a more natural part of the way we communicate as well. And I think we need to be alive to that. It's not all about the carefully managed editorial story. It's also about the very informal personal connections that, that we need to allow people to make without almost getting out of the way perhaps is as valuable there as managing the story. Yeah, so if we if that is looking then at the kind of environment in which you're trying to design an environment in which that can happen so we talked about the content but in terms of the environment what kinds of new skills are needed to to develop that environment yeah so i think what we're doing and we're kind of in various chapters of creating a digital team in the academy i think or a digital product team which is what what uh, what i'm managing and where we're at with that at the moment is i think what we're designing really in in that structure is probably what you would see as a kind of product management function in many digital businesses. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, roles of the product owner, the product manager, who are the kind of guardians and custodians of user need, who decide which of the user needs are the most important, prioritize them, they write again the stories that define what you develop. We have then software engineers and software developers who are, are responsible for the creation of the tools. Uh, we have, we employ things like information architects to help us with navigation and language and tagging and organization. So a lot of the things you would expect in a kind of content product team, that's pretty much the team that we're starting to build in the academy at the moment. And one of the things that they, they need to be able to do and are good at is working with the people who, who have the expertise that we want people to learn from. That might be the editorial people who are constructing, you know, making those stories, or it might be managing the connections, you know, in a more kind of social experience. So those are the kinds of skills that we've been looking for in, in, in hiring that team at the moment. Right. And what, what do you think are the kind of the, the biggest challenges in terms of creating that transformation? I think one of the challenges is, is using the right language. Because I think you can end up, you, so if you work in a sort of agile product team, the world of agile and lean development has developed its own language of user stories and story points and t-shirt sizes and all these kind of bizarre artifacts of the language. You have, obviously, in the L&D world, there's training needs analysis. So actually, often what people are trying to do is the same thing. You're trying to identify a need that someone has, someone wants to learn something, find something out, usually find something out, get something done in some way, that's the purpose. There's a learning need behind that. I think trying to find a, a language, a way of describing what we're all trying to do, in, in, you know, almost like a decoding of the language is one of the interesting things that we're discovering, is that people need to find a way of just having a sensible and practical conversation about it, coming from those different cultures. I suppose one of the things that, that I think we, one of the things I think the BBC does well in this respect is everybody's very, very interested always in the audience requirement, the audience need. For us, we might call that a user need rather than an audience need or a learner need, but it's very easy then to kind of gather around that, that notion of what's the audience insight, mm. what are they after, and how do we manage something that helps them achieve that or meets that need. So I think that's probably where, you know, where we, we do have some troubles understanding each other sometimes, but I think if we can usually, kind of put a stake in the ground around that, then it makes it much simpler. And I think that's probably true for most people. And you, you, you were saying um, in your talk about the, uh, the importance of that content being pulled by the, um, by the user, by the, by the audience themselves. Do you want to say a little bit about, um, about that? Yeah, I suppose, I, I guess one of the things that I don't, I'm not a, I don't have an extensive learning and development background. And when I first arrived, probably five, six years ago in the academy, and heard lots of conversations about learning management systems and portals, and portals particularly became, I was sort of quizzical in my sort of uh, um, digital product background, I guess a portal was never something that you were proud of. <laughs> a portal was something that everybody stopped being in 1999 to 2001, you know, when Yahoo 
because of famous portal and excite and lycos and then moved away and then there's this industry that's making portals is kind of the place you go yeah. that's the portal to all this stuff and you then you herd your kind of audience towards the portal i think that feels that's an old i think that's become an outmoded model now and i think our expectation uh, as as audience members or users is that actually we work and live in digital worlds where we grab and pull things to us so things come through particularly now i think through you know whatever social channels you're using and we pull them through the feeds the contacts through liking following etc those are the mechanisms i think that we need to respond to because people expect to be able to see and pull through or choose almost anything we like now whether it's a shopping or learning or anything so i think we're trying to understand how to do that less of the building a learning destination or perhaps less of building the learning destination we build a destination but what's in that destination can actually be found in a lot of other parts of people's digital life as well so that's what we're, that's the way we're moving towards that, that yeah. approach I think. and uh, in, in terms of the tools for doing that kind of thing are you thinking about um, bespoke tools or are you looking outside at the kind of consumer are the consumer tools available out there that you can it's, use? It's probably a little of both I mean I think um, so one of the principles that we're applying to this sort of digital development is, is, is buy don't build so we, we're not necessarily um, we don't want to spend a lot of time engineering infrastructure that's just for us because I think that, you know that often there's something that's usable um, so I think we're using what's already available part of that's BBC technology part of it's uh, you know a learning management system we work with organizations like Brightwave and the Tesla product which we think does a lot of the things that, that our analysis told us we should be we should be doing I think probably what we're doing is is we're using some of the bespoke uh, um, components to make sure that those elements knit together in a sensible way um, but I think we're trying to use things that are freely and openly available where we can because it's quicker and easier to to experiment so what kinds of things have you so we're using lots, you know, social channels so you know, we've, I mean, Facebook and Twitter as obvious examples uh, YouTube's important for us because it's a it's a video channel which has a natural affinity with the BBC but I think those are the kinds of, which we're testing with those tools to try and understand you know, how do we manage around them but also yeah. what do people expect for, for us to offer them in them as well and we can do that relatively quickly I think relatively it's never as quick as you think yeah and it's, so you see it as a kind of the end result of that will be like an ecosystem of different not uh, an ecosystem of different yeah. tools rather than a very much so we, we will not we will not, I, I cannot believe that there's a big system out there that does everything and I'd be very suspicious of a big system that claimed to do everything there are components that we're using from from those different elements and trying to what we're trying to do I guess our user experience challenge is to present that in a way that allows people to find things out and get things done in the way that they they need to and want to and we're using what we understand of the way people need to learn and the way to help them to kind of present it in a way that's most useful so I guess I'm mean, you know sort of often used metaphors we're kind of providing a scaffolding that we can then move around rather than building the whole building which is then there and you have to use the building in the way it is so I think we're trying to be a bit more flexible and was that was <coughs> a pushback from I, I don't know from the um, your your technologists within the within the BBC but a lot of organizations I, I know that the IT function would come yeah. down and say let's find one thing rather than having multitude of different systems yeah I think I think uh, I think that's changing certainly my experience is changing perhaps not not in everyone's organization I think one of the things that's been really interesting is the use of agile approaches and this product management notion to, to arrive at some of these solutions is that it allows you to kind of effectively place smaller bets more rapidly and actually in the end that's quicker and cheaper and you can you can see how you're going a little more quickly and I think more cost effectively than the big requirements gathering the big procurement and then the big integration you know which takes a long time you can end up in a different place at the end as the years roll by and you know can be more costly so I think we're I think that's becoming a better understood approach and I think so we're, we're able to kind of you know to help sort of describe how that works and that's more, I think it's more about hiring people who get going quickly than it is yeah. about sort of bringing in a big integration project. Um, although some of that integration still needs to be done, I think. Well, that's very interesting. I hope you'll come back and talk to us when, Certainly, when you've yeah, yeah. got further down the line. Yes, when we've got yes. it all sorted, yeah, which, <laughs> yes, if, if ever, yeah. All right, thanks Great. very much. Mark. No, thank you.